One of the advantages of taking a break from time to time from wrestling is get a little chance to refresh and recharge, uh, not be quite so emotionally attached, which can certainly lead to negativity being espoused, which I certainly have been guilty of over the years. Uh, so that can be a good thing. On the flip side of it, one of the bad things about it is if you take a little break for a little while and you don't pay as much attention, you might actually legitimately miss something or be trying to catch up on the back end of what has actually happened. And, uh, you know, forgive me here, but I didn't realize that there was this whole big controversy about Patrick Clark, the Velveteen Dream. Like, I was totally, totally unaware of just how serious the allegations were, just how much of a kind of headwind there was blowing into him about the fact that people didn't want to see him anymore. They didn't want him in WWE anymore. They didn't want him here on NXT television anymore. Like legitimately was news to me and caught me completely by surprise. Now that's not because he was a guy. So I automatically assume he's innocent or they, he's a TV star. So it automatically makes him innocent. None of that. I just, I was legitimately surprised. I did just, found out this past week, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So admittedly, I, I, I inboxed somebody, thanks to Lex Man, because you caught me up on some at least of what was going on. So I do greatly appreciate that. But I felt like it was important to come on here today and talk about this for just a little bit. Now, certainly I'm probably way behind the times here. And, you know, there are certainly probably going to be context that I'm missing, context that I do not have. Context that I tried to search for but may not have ultimately gotten or context that I was given was not full and complete. Um, so if I miss anything, any especially key data points or elements or key pieces of evidence from one perspective or another, let me apologize ahead of time for that. I'm trying to take the best stab I can based off of what I have read, what I have seen, what has been told to me. And I think it, in a larger part, it just kind of comes down to the whole thing of what do we really know about this situation? Not what you think you know, what you want to believe you know, one way or another. Like, what do we actually know here? Is there actually really verifiable, damning evidence that suggests that he did something really, really bad and potentially with several individuals? Or is it hearsay in one person's word or a couple of people's word versus another? Like, like, like the, the sad thing about this is that accusers being male or female, and I believe in this case potentially both, um, there's kind of this extreme of either dismiss any accuser or automatically believe every accuser. And, and based off of our world, that first mentality is absolutely ridiculous and completely unacceptable and uncalled for. Accusers should also be listened to, yes, but should not be automatically believed. Because unfortunately, the reality of our world is, it's not everybody that lever, levels some type of allegation of sexual misconduct, sexual harassment, sexual assault, rape, is on the up and up or is telling the truth. You have plenty of clout chasers out there. You have plenty of liars out there. Sometimes it could just simply be a matter of one perspective versus another. Like, so, so we, we live in this world where you would like, in theory, to say, hey, this person is making this accusation. You could 100% believe that. But that's not the reality. And I hate when I hear people say, well, I believe them, or I believe her, or I believe him. No, I will listen to her. I will listen to him. But that doesn't mean I should automatically believe. Why should I? Why should anybody? Like, that's just foolish, especially with the reality of our world. You know, and sometimes there's this kind of defense mechanism of, well, this is this person and he's famous. Why would he do it? Why would he risk it all? Why would he get so stupid? Because people are stupid. And they do really dumb, stupid things. And especially sometimes the more famous you are, the more star power you have, the more clout that you have, the more kind of a God complex do you think you can get away with things. And as a result... You know, being grounded in reality, having a good moral compass are just not things that are all that interesting to you because you're empowered to do more. You're able to get away with more. Life is all about leverage and that position, that clout, that power you have buys you additional leverage that other folks just simply do not have. Uh, but when I look at this, like, I have to say, admittedly, I've seen a lot of people seem to all of a sudden have really turned against this guy. 
And I find that fascinating for a guy that so many of the hardcore wrestling fans and the hardcore wrestling community uh, really seem to be into, really seem to like his gimmick, like the performer, want to see him do well, thought he was a future star. Now all of a sudden you're seeing all these people are saying, I can't believe he's back on television. I can't believe they brought him back. It was surprising to me. I, I also have to say, admittedly, I surprise when I see some of these same fans or some of these different fans that are saying, well, WWE put them back on TV, so that must have meant that they investigated and everything was on the up and up and the hunky-dory and the free and clear. Really? We're, we're talking about the same Vince McMahon run WWE, right? You really think automatically that they would go through and do a truly thorough investigation as great, if not greater or more diligent than what you would get from the police? Seems to be wanting and asking for an awful lot there. Now, I saw one accuser had put out a tweet thread the other day. And one thing that really jumped out to me was, you know, he was talking about something made him uncomfortable that didn't necessarily feel like it was sexual. But at the same point in time, what I saw was talking about the story of Patrick Clark was 19 and I was 16 and he told me he could get me into WWE, which I thought about it. I said, I think Patrick Clark's like 25. So when he was 19, would have been 2014, which I believe was before he even had the WWE contract. So in and of itself, like when I see that, that's questionable. Like that's questionable. Is that, is that just the accuser is mixing up the dates, which certainly can be an innocent mistake and certainly can happen. Or is it a matter of, uh, the dude's just making some stuff up. Now, you kind of get into the whole thing of, well, one person's 19, one person's 16. Like, you know, how bad is that? You know, depending on the state. In some states, that could be potentially legal in terms of having some type of relationship with that three-year age difference between 19 and 16. In other states, it's not. The sending of photos and illicit photos, nude photos, different story. I said, though, do we actually have proof to know that it came from Patrick Clark's device? That's not me asking a question to automatically dismiss and say it did it. I'm saying, I don't know. Does anybody know? And if not, why are we rushing to judgment or conclusion on one side of the fence or the other on this issue or on this topic if we truly don't know? And unless we could provide verifiable proof of showing where it came from the actual device, it came from an IP address where he is actually at at that time, something along those lines, like that is something that could potentially leave the door open to he got hacked. You know, a lot of times it's the he, I got hacked to excuse really dumb, crappy behavior. Not always, sometimes people obviously get legitimately hacked. But what, what really worries me and fr kind of frustrates me a little bit is the kind of automatic rush to judgment here without having really, truly documentable, verifiable evidence in one way or another. Like just because somebody said that he did this or even sent a photo of him, do you know the age of that person? Do you know when he sent that? And even what's tricky and dangerous in today's world is what you can do with Photoshop and other things. You can make anything look like it came from somebody and it totally and completely did not. And again, that's not to say that it didn't happen, that some or all of these things did not happen. That also doesn't mean that they did. And to the whole thing about, well, his accusers are this, do you know the accusers personally? Do you know exactly how old they are? Do you know how, how old they were at the time that the alleged incident or incidents happened? Do you know that they even truly happened at all? Like, and let's be clear here. You know, if this is a situation where this guy has been preying on underage individuals for a period of time and trying to uh, prep them and be a, a clout chasing or clout giving type of individual using his clout, using his platform in order to do some Epstein type of stuff, like, yes, he should be bumped from wrestling and bumped from wrestling forever and thrown in jail. But the reality is, is if you can't prove it, and you don't have the verifiable evidence, which is not just somebody's word, a lot of times that's not good enough in a court of law. Like you have to have some verifiability of the evidence presented. There has to be some type of evidence to support what that person is saying or support that accusation. And oftentimes words alone are not going to be enough. 
And again, that's just the reality of the society and the world that we are in today. But would I like to think that for him to be on NXT, that Velveteen Dream either got word from the cops that they are agreeing with this story that it didn't happen or they have evidence to suggest that uh, the things that he was accused of did not occur. I would like to think that because otherwise to me that is a gross, gross, gross misjudgment by WWE to put him on television. Not just because it would be a gross, gross misjudgment by WWE to put him on television if there's still a potential of some legal action being taken against him. Uh, does not automatically mean that I 100% have to believe them either. I mean, nor should I just naively, naively automatically assume because we know with this company over the years, they have a history of doing, making some really poor choices and really poor decisions in what they do. Um, but I just want to caution people here. Like a lot of the things that I've read, a lot of the things that have been shown, a lot of the things that I've seen are people saying that he's guilty, he's guilty, he's guilty. And, and I don't see necessarily where you have the documented verifiable evidence that proves that he is at this point. That does not mean that he isn't. That does not mean that he is. I just really worry about the fact of this quick and decisive rush to judgment by folks. And people will talk about, well, it's the cancel culture and it's this and that. And yes, there are certainly dangers with the cancel culture. One of those is, is people don't get an opportunity to grow and learn and improve upon themselves based off of previous mistakes. Now, that doesn't mean that those things that happened in the past should automatically be forgotten about or dismissed or just brushed away or made okay. Absolutely not. But it's like, I'm going to cancel this person. Valentine Dream is canceled. Well, you're potentially canceling somebody and trying to contribute to ruining their career when they very well may not have done anything or may at least may not have done anything that was technically illegal. So, so I, I guess the, the thing that I would ask for folks is, is if you don't know the full story or at least enough of the story to be able to formulate a reasonable opinion, like an example of that would be Superfly Jimmy Snuka and what happened with Nancy in that hotel room almost 40 years ago. There's enough reason to believe. There's enough reason to understand. There's enough reason to have a relative understanding of what probably happened that night. And when you look at his changing stories over the 30 plus years after the incident, like there was more than just smoke. There was a blazing inferno of a fire. And now those are the types of things that lead me to say, you know, when you talk about Vince, like he's been quick to sweep some of these things under the rug over the years and pretend that they didn't happen. The whole ring boy scandal. You know, it was like Pat Patterson was implicated by Murray Hodgson and you know, was Pat Patterson just a victim of this because he was gay and he himself was kind of being discriminated against? Or was he getting frisky with some of the ring boys? Well, when you look back at the evidence, like Pat Patterson was one type of scenario, whereas Garvin was an entirely different thing and you had much more damning evidence against him. Does it mean that there couldn't have been or does it mean that there wasn't with Pat Patterson? I'm just, the point I'm getting at here is you, know, you have to have some type of evidence to sit there and want to pursue somebody to potentially say they should never be able to perform in wrestling or work in wrestling ever again. Maybe Patrick Clark is guilty of bad judgment and poor choices. Maybe he is guilty of more than that. He may not be guilty of any of it for all that you know. So just be careful before you go too quickly on passing judgment here because even if you read some things and you see some of the way some of these wrestling websites are kind of framed the argument or framed the conversation, it can lead you to kind of fill in some of those gaps and think that something more happened than may actually have. Until you get documented proof that it came from him and that you know the victims were underage and that it actually was him and he did this, right? maybe you shouldn't be so quick to try and cancel that is all I'm saying.